Good morning, everybody. Today is a beautiful day. Today we're here, Brenda's here to help me do some filming on this white horse plow. Uh, generally, I have um, put three horses in this white horse plow when I'm out in the, of the big field, but today I just have two and there's reason for that. But let me explain a couple things before we even talk about that. So here is the new seeding that we planted last week. And if you remember in the video, it was very dry. Well, the last few days we have got a lot of rain. So we're gonna be plowing in some pretty wet ground this morning. Also at the end of this video, Abby is gonna tell you about the contestants in our harness giveaway that we're having. And you can all vote on who you'd like to win that contest. We have one spot down in the field, down there, that water is actually sitting in the field. Hopefully not too much and for not too long. Hopefully today it'll be gone and, and the oats can take a little bit of moisture um, like that, you know, being submerged in water, but not much. So hopefully that will dry out and it won't affect the crop. So now we're working on continuing on this plowing job and we are going to be planting corn in this next strip. Now, like I said, I normally use three horses. Today I'm just using the two because I, I got that walking plow that I want to use in the garden. And of course you use just two horses in the walking plow and, and if I do get to that, I will talk more about that. Um, but I decided to just, last spring I used this um, plow with these two horses in the garden. And so the plow was set up for two horses and then I've got to change the pole around to go to three. But I decided before I do that, I'm going to plow these two because I want to plow the walking plow with these two and see if, see if that works. If I don't use the walking plow, I will probably plow the garden today with this plow before I change it over to three horses. So I just wanted to bring them out and plow a little bit with the two before I go to the walking plow. So we'll get started down through. You will see as we head down through this field, the first part up here in the, the higher part, it's all high and dry and great, but the lower part down there is very, very wet. Um, there is water. The furrow is full of water and this seems insane to be plowing in this type of conditions but we are getting so late in our planting um, we've got to get this plowed and get this job done um, but also I have known over the years that when it's wet like this and it's quite often the furrows are full of water but after two or three passes it's completely gone and it's dry underneath so hopefully that's what we're going to find out today. So we'll get started with this plow. Uh, a couple things about this plow. Um, you will notice that I talk about my D-ring harnesses quite often and I have a tight, tight hitch with my D-ring harnesses generally. This is an exception to the rule. I do not have a tight hitch at all. You'll see it's very loose. Now, the reason it's very loose is because it has to be. If it was tight, tight, this ruler right here would not be able to slide back and forth. This has to slide back and forth. Every time we swap sides, this is a two-way plow. So every time we swap sides, this roller has to slide back and forth to the particular plow it's pulling. So when it's plowing down this side, it's going to be here. When I get down to the other side, I swap it around and this will just slide right over there to pull that other plow. If this is really tight, it would not work. So it has to be kind of loose like this. But also I have right here a lever that turns the pole left and right and every time with two horses when you swap sides you have to adjust this lever when you we're running three horses i keep it right in the center i don't have to worry about it which is nice but when you're running two you have to adjust this back and forth a little bit each time you turn and a lot of times it's easy to forget so i have to keep reminding myself i got to do that so okay let's uh let's head down this furrow and see what we can I'm going to be plowing a lot shallower than I was before with three horses and then when I go back to three horses I will um, make it a little deeper but it just pulls harder so I'm not going to plow quite so deep with just two. I don't know exactly what where I should be. So it's a lot of guess in here. Step a little back. Careful. Oh, I like that. It's pretty shallow, but that's okay. I'll 
tongue seems to be about the right spot. Although maybe not quite. What I want to try and do is keep this plow, this, this wheel close to the furrow. Okay, I'm actually, I'm still too loose on my evener because Ken is hitting his neck. I mean, Buck is hitting his neck yoke. Just go up there, Brendan. Let me just show people what I mean. Did you see that? Yep. His, his right. knee hit it. So I'm going to drop it two lengths. That might be too much, but I don't think so. I gotta clean up the See, a lot of that water will stay on the, the left hand side. And after two or three times, I'm hoping that this will all be completely dry. I gotta clean off the lens. So one of the things I'm, I'm doing this year um, to help promote growth, um, the longer this standing hay is, the higher it is, the more nutrients that will go back into the soil by rolling it underneath. So even though I'm very, very late in plowing and planting and, and my corn is not that late, today is the, what's the date today? 18th. 18th. I mean, my general planting date is around the 20th. So it's not like it's very late to plant for me. Um, but I still have to do all the plowing and the disking and get it ready to plant. So I am running a little bit late. But anyways, um, by because of that, it's actually allowing me to let this grass grow more. And it just adds so much more nutrients to the soil. It's green manure, what it is. And it will actually help um, promote this corn crop. And since I don't use any fertilizer, uh, chemical fertilizer, I just um, use manure and green manure um, to have this uh, grow and that's why I usually just put corn in a piece of ground for one year and then I rotate it onto a grass seed which is what happened over here. I had it in corn last year and now it's grass seed. I'm also not planning on planting quite so much corn this year as I did last year. Um, I just really don't need it so I'll probably cut back and being that I'm late and I have a lot of work to do I think I might cut back a little there. Um, um, Monday of this week, I spread a whole bunch of manure on this field here. I cleaned my uh, pens out for the cows. And so this got a lot of manure again, and I've spread manure here before. So this should be a fairly fertile piece of ground. So I'm curious to see how well it does. 
Of course, a lot depends on the weather, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, so now let's go to Abby and she'll tell you all about this contest that we're doing. And then on our next video, we'll continue on plowing and I'll show you what happens to all this water. And then who knows, we might even try a little bit of plowing with that walking plow of mine in the garden. Hey everyone, so it's the moment you've all been waiting for. We are finally going to do our um, horse harness contest, giveaway contest. Um, so I'm going to read you all of the applicants that we've gotten and I'm hoping that we didn't um, leave anyone out. If we did, it was unintentional and I apologize. But um, this, these are the emails that we got for people that are interested in getting um, the harnesses that Duke and Earl used to wear that they've grown out of. So uh, first up, I have Elizabeth who has a farm in Ohio. Um, she was raised around riding horses, so it's a bit of a learning curve for her to start with driving horses. Um, so her husband and they have six kids. Was, well, kid number six is on the way. So they bought a halflinger horse last year and they've been doing small jobs around the, their farm with it with um, him and one of their other horses, which is a, a Morgan Quarter Cross. So they've been able to do a lot of um, different jobs around the farm with that, with Bud and Junior. So these would be for Bud and Junior. Um, and they have only one harness set. And the uh, so they have one harness and the other one is a bunch of spare parts that they've rigged together to make a harness, sort of. So you can see in these pics um, that we're showing uh, the harnesses that they have now. So. They want to, um, in the future, open up a camp, a summer camp that teaches kids how to do self-sufficient um, things such as gardening, canning, herbs, and working on farms. So the harness would be a safe way for them to work with the horses and also teach others how to work with horses. So Elizabeth's um, grandparents always used work horses, um, but now they aren't able to because of health issues. So she's always had memories of doing um, horse work as a child. So the harnesses that they have now that they're using don't have collars. Um, so they're able to do some small jobs, but um, it would be really great for them to have a harness with the collars that they could do some bigger jobs around the farm with. So if you want to vote for Elizabeth um, to have the harnesses, vote number one in the comments below. Next up is Julie. Um, Julie has a small horse rescue and she wanted to use um, driving as a rehabilitation tool to help the horses gain more confidence. Um, so her grandfather actually used to use his horses when he was young um, to pick up milk and moonshine from neighboring farms. That's interesting. But uh, her, so her grandfather um, started buying land at 14 years old wow, and cleared the fields with um, his horse team. And he even bought a house and moved it with several teams onto his basement foundation. And he lived his whole life in that house. That's very cool. Um, so her grandfather taught her how to drive horses when she was young, but since she hasn't had the opportunity since then, so she is excited to start up with horses again. Um, so if you wanna vote for Julie, vote number two in the comments below. Next up is Travis, um, who is very interested in the harness. He raises Gypsy Cobb and Cobb Cross horses. So he is excited to start another team and they need another set of harnesses over in Idaho. So if you would like to vote for Travis, vote number three in the comments below. Next up is Andrew who lives in Connecticut and has one Belgian and one mini and two other, er, and two stander mules. And they have an old leather harness that's starting to fall apart. So they um, rescued these two mules and their names are Star and Mindy. And they rescued them from a shelter in New Hampshire and they're the most perfect mules. So might wanna give harnesses to the most perfect mules. Um, they help us work in the garden and pull the four cart around with us and our two kids on it. And so they'd be very grateful to win these harnesses to keep them safely working with the mules and to teach the kids about how to work with animals and to enjoy a small farm. So if you would like to vote for Andrew, vote number four in the comments below. Next up, we have Garrett, who is 35 years old and is married with children, four children ages four to eight. 
So they live in Michigan, but they're moving to North Carolina to join the Amish. Can you join the Amish? Yes. I've never heard of that. But um, so they don't have any horses right now, but they're looking for a team of halflingers or fjords. Um, and it would mean a lot for them to get the harnesses so they can start their whole new lifestyle. They're moving to North Carolina on May 19th. That's yesterday. So Garrett, if you're watching this, I hope that everything went well with your move and that you enjoy North Carolina. So if you would like to vote for Garrett, make sure to write number five in the comments below. Okay, next up is Gail. Gail recently bought a Percheron Belgian Cross Colt. Gail had a Percheron quarter horse that was used for riding and he was tragically killed on the highway after being my best friend for 16 years. That's very sad. Um, after watching your YouTube videos, we're very interested in driving our blue boy. So um, they're interested in working in the woods and doing some logging in the woods in Northwest Wisconsin, uh, where the weather seems very similar to yours. That makes sense. Um, so if you would like to vote for Gail and the Percheron Belgian Cross Colt, make sure to vote number six in the comments below. Next up is Scott, who has two Suffolk Punch Colts and is looking for their first training gear, just like Duke and Earl. Um, Pancho is nine months old and Lefty is just over a year. This gear would uh, fit them and I would use it to train them. They're located in Mississippi and um, Scott is a retired disabled veteran and is starting up his farm to help with his PTSD. So if you would like to vote for Scott, um, you can write number seven in the comments below. Okay, our next contestant is Caitlin, and she actually has her own YouTube channel called 17th and 18th Century Horsemanship, which looks really cool. So if you're interested in checking that out, um, before, be sure to, I'll put the, a card up and you can, and I'll put it in the description below if you'd like to check that out. Um, so she um, says that it would be a blessing to have your harnesses in my stable and she would use it nearly every day um, or as needed for work. And she would use it in her YouTube channel where she puts a mix of things, all things horse history, focusing on colonial America, America, America. And um, she's a history student and is passionate about teaching th what she learns, um, such as historic sites, cavalry reenacting, farming history, harness repair, side saddle riding, and more. And um, Caitlin actually sent us a video, so you can check that out. Good morning, Jim. My name is Caitlin Ferguson. I have a YouTube channel called 17th and 18th Century Horsemanship, where I train my horse with manuscripts from the 16 and 1700s, living as our founding fathers would have done with their own horses. This way, I can improve my own horsemanship, get a better understanding of history, and of course, have fun, using my passion for horses towards historical research. I am of course interested in your giveaway. On top of absolutely loving your channel, I was very pleased to hear that you are offering a giveaway for two different harnesses. I would be very, very, very happy to get such harnesses. They would be going toward my own research and my own YouTube channel. So what I have right now is mostly just, I don't have the collar. I have a breast collar harness with which we can only do very light jobs. Getting a collar harness is the next step toward our driving and working goals. Based on your description, the harnesses you are giving away seem the perfect size and make for my mare. We could expand on our skills with the new tech. Now I have several jobs that need to be done on my own farmyard, using my mare's help. That being said, of course, we would also dedicate an episode of my mare and I using the harness should we be honored to receive one. That being said, as a starving student, this is an opportunity for me to expand both my horsemanship and make more YouTube videos around this subject of horses, history, as well as get work done around the farm.
So thank you, Jim, for all that you do. And I look forward to seeing all your videos in the future. So if you would like to vote for Caitlin, make sure to write number eight in the comments below. Okay, last but not least, we have Melinda, Chris, Charlie, and Colt. They would love to be entered to win the harnesses for Duke and Earl, and they actually own a full brother to Duke, as well as a half-sister. So it would be on Duke's brother and sister, half-sister. Mom and Dad actually had a chance to meet them when they came home from picking up the Colts um, from the same place that Mom and Dad bought Duke and Earl. So they're a family of four with two boys, four and eight. So Melinda actually grew up on a family farm where they produced enough crops to feed and grow their 4-H project animals. Um, so she had a mare that she trained and showed in 4-H who is now 31 years old. That's very old for a horse, I believe, and um, has given our boys many miles in the saddle. Um, she says that this horse taught her more than a person ever could. Her husband, Chris, grew up helping her, his grandfather on a dairy farm, then was the manager of James Bond Race Horse Farm for several years prior, prior to moving on to a career in welding. She says that farming is a way of life for them, and they've fallen in love with the Suffolk Punch um, horse breed, and they want to keep the breed alive because it is critically endangered. So right now, um, their filly, Dawn, is nine months old and they've been putting a collar and a harness on her, but um, the full-size draft harness that they have is way too big. So these harnesses would be really great for training um, at this size. So if you would like to vote for Melinda, Chris, Charlie, and Colt, make sure to vote number nine in the comments below. We actually have one more bonus contestant. Number 10 is Bradley who is interested in the um, harnesses to help train some colts and halflingers that he has that he uses around his ranch to gather small bales and also takes them to different shows around Nebraska. So right now he's been using old harnesses that he's borrowed from someone, so he would love to have a pair of harnesses for himself that he can use to train these horses. So if you would like to vote for Bradley, put number 10 in the comments below. So be sure to cast your vote for who you would like to win these harnesses, um, number one through nine, put it in the comments below and we will be able to tell you on the next video who the winner is and we're gonna send them these harnesses for free so that they can get their horses using new harnesses, new to them, well used and loved by Duke and Earl. Um, so I hope that you cast your vote and we're excited to see who's the winner.